Hi, my name is Mike Rushing of Tamarack Outdoors and welcome to this video of the Frontier Stove. So then, let's look at the stove components in a bit more detail. First of all, this is the stove box. Okay, we'll look at that in more detail shortly. With the stove box, you get this coal catcher, which we'll look in more detail shortly. And also you get five stovepipe sections. One of the sections has this on it, which is a damper, which we'll look in more detail later. Next, you get a spark arrestor, which is a must. This diffuses any sparks coming out the top of the stovepipe. Then you can get a three litre water heater. You can also buy in separate sections uh, stovepipe. Um, for the, uh, the tent behind me, which is a 12 to 14 Hellsport uh, Baranga, um, you need four extra stovepipe sections. Uh, for the 8 to 10 Varanga, you need three. For the 4 to 6 Varanga, you need two. Currently, Frontier don't do uh, a cowl to protect the tent if you use it in a Lavu or TP style tent. So, we've actually created our own. Um, this is uh, to go over the stovepipe and protect the, uh, the tent components from the stovepipe from being uh, melted. So, uh, that's in production now. Um, what you'll find this one has just got screws in at the minute, uh, the ones that we're having made, um, they've got um, uh, wing nuts on the end. And then if you've got a tent uh, that has, that, that has got um, uh, a ground sheet in it that can't be removed, uh, Frontier also do this uh, heat pad that the stove sits on which is a real bonus. Another good idea. Um, within your stove sections obviously to stop your hands from getting sooty and things like that is one of these cheap pair of uh, two pound kind of work gloves and then I keep everything inside a big stove bag you can get a stove bag for the stove and also the water heater uh, but I've not bothered with that I keep everything in a bag this thing's got backpack straps on it um, so I can carry it to camp so yeah, so let's look at the uh, the stove box in a bit more detail. First of all, the Frontier stove has got three folding legs. These are kept in place by these pins. Uh, to get the legs out, you just pull the pin out, move the leg back up to its fitted position and place the pin back in. Okay, and it makes the leg really sturdy. So now we'll look at uh, this, this is the coal catcher that fits just underneath the stove door. So we just slot that in, push it home, okay, and that locks in there. Obviously this is prevent any coals that fall out the stove door, uh, prevent it from uh, hitting the ground. And then nice and snug your stove door fits over the top of that. So then just as comparison, I've put the Frontier stove up against the Hellsport Labu stove. When I first used a Frontier stove, uh, I used it uh, uh, about a month ago or so, uh, when it was really cold. Uh, and what I found was that the legs were quite high, so the stove was sitting quite high. Um, and I had to actually dig the legs in to lower it, so I was getting more heat. I was actually sitting in a chair in this lavu, and I was warm from about here up. Um, but dropping the stove, um, I found that um, I was warm from sort of like the knees up. So if you compare that to the um, Hellsport Lavu stove, the base of that sits a lot lower. Okay, so I look at these two as this being more of a heater and this being a bit more of an all-round sort of like cooking and heater. In really cold climates such as Scandinavia and places like that, um, I would rather plump for this because uh, you can put a lot more wood into it uh, and it is a bit more of a heater. Um, whereas this is good for the UK um, all year round. Uh, for cooking and, and to be used as a heater as well. So then, I've now placed the Frontier stove inside the lavu. Um, it's quite important that you get it level if you're going to be putting pots and pans on here. Okay, you must get it level. The other important thing as well is to ensure that it's not actually touching the pole of the lavu. Uh, this is aluminium pole, will not take kindly to a lot of heat. So, as a minimum, four inches away. 
um, and no more than that really. So now we're going to look at the stovepipe sections. So one of the first stovepipe sections to put on is this one. This is the one with the damper. Um, as you can see through here, if I tilt that, you can see a little disc in there moving around as I turn it. Okay. Uh, and what this does, this gives the stovepipe draw. Uh, and also if you put it in that fashion there, you can damp it down in the evenings. Okay, to reduce the amount of oxygen going in and so keeping the burn longer throughout the night. So this is the first uh, section to go on. The damper section goes uppermost and then just slots into the stove like that. And then the stove pipe sections just quite easily just slot into each other. And then with the thin end, slots into there. Uh, so all I've got fitted here is the five sections that the, uh, the Frontier stove comes with. Now I'm going to add in the additional ones. So this is the view of looking down inside the cowl itself. Uh, we have three screws at the top and three at the bottom. So now we've fitted two stovepipe sections uh, onto the cowl. Okay, as you can see, there's a nice airflow gap in between. Uh, what I tend to do, remember, uh, when we go into production with these, uh, these will have wing nuts on, uh, these nuts. Um, so what I tend to do is, because I know I'm using this size of stovepipe, I just set two nuts the same and then adjust, adjust one onto that. That's the cowl fitted and the spark arrestor. So you can see, so like nine stovepipe sections for the 12 to 14 Baranga. Uh, just enough height to take it above the... Uh, the top of the crown uh, and you can see if we close up a little bit you can see the uh, one of the main construction straps of the lava is sitting on the cowl that's fine as long as it's no no parts are sitting on the stovepipe itself that cowl it's fine and actually in rain we can actually put the cowl uh, sorry put the top hat around the cowl to prevent rain getting in uh, but as long as it's touching that cowl nothing will burn so going up on the inside of the tent and there's a the cowl fitted there as you can see there's the uh, the mozzinet um, just touching the cowl that's fine um, and then you can see the air gap through the cowl itself so that's the stovepipe fitted that's the distance away from the pole going back down to the stove box. So moving on to the water heater. This is a three litre capacity stainless steel water container. This cutaway section fits around the bottom section of the stove pipe. This section here is really flat uh, with a nice welded seam that sits on top of the uh, stove top itself. Uh, and the way it fits to the stove is, is quite ingenious really. Um, put that on the stove, flip that round and then that lug just sits into there so it sits in like that real nifty way of locking on it's got a nice two-way brass tap and it's a non-pressurized container little carrying handle here so no problem with it boiling uh, and blowing up inside the tent this is just a, a cap that just slides across so it's non-pressurized uh, nice big opening to fill up while it's on the stove as well so now we've got the water heater fitted, uh, it's clamped on there, uh, really easy to refill it, just open this and then we've got the other feature that the uh, stove has got is this removable disc, um, so that comes out uh, which is great as long as your pan or pot fits over the top of that you'll get no smoke into the tent and then you can actually uh, get a lot more heat. Uh, for frying and things like that. So for lighting the stove, the preparation is the key, ensuring you've got tinder and plenty of kindling. Uh, what I found with all uh, steel stoves that, um, that are either in cabins or uh, in tents is once you, you initially light it, it's always good actually filling a stove box up with sort of like thumb thick kindling. Uh, what this stoves is get initially gets a lot of heat uh, into the tent or, or cabin. Um, gets everything hot, so the stove box, the stove pipe gets everything hot 
um, gives a good bed of coals and then you can start putting on uh, your, your bigger firewood sort of like wrist thick and, and upwards. What you'll find on the uh, on the frontier stove uh, is this uh, little handle on, on the door and um, that's got two little notches in it. Uh, push it all the way in that actually shuts the stove door itself. Um, shut that and then shut the damper you'll shut the stove down so little oxygen's getting in so that's good just to tick it over throughout the night. Uh, what I've found with that is actually burning peat um, put three four blocks of peat on there shut the stove down it's actually still lit eight nine hours later um, but for normal running it's always good just to put it on the second nick which just leaves this stove door just a, uh, a jar or, or just open a little bit by about 10 millimeters that allows a lot of oxygen getting in keeps the burn going so it's good to boil more water and to cook on and keep the heat in the tent so go to our friend the old Hamaro paper Break that into three strips and then roll that round your index finger so you're making a little circle like that. Put that into the stove box. Then the last one in, just like that. Make sure that's established and then place it in, make sure touching the other two bits of the Hamaro paper. Just give that a second or two just to uh, get lit and establish itself then we can start putting the kindling on. Initially just put the kindling on in small batches once that starts to take you can actually add a lot more kindling on literally filling the stove box up. So let that establish a little bit, a little bit of smoke coming out of there, but that's fine. Um, the kindling I'm using here at the minute is uh, spruce, um, but you can use anything, any hardwood, softwood. Uh, but it's good when you actually get onto your full burn where you're using your big firewood is actually to try, if you can, to use um, as much hardwood as possible. So you can see the, uh, um, the wood in there getting established now. Um, might even be able to hear bit of a draw going on so I'll pack it up more with kindling and we'll come back later um, once the stove is well established. So then it's been about five minutes uh, since I lit the stove and you can see now it's uh, it's really getting well established uh, to the point of where I need now to uh, to close the door just on that little snick uh, that little 10 mil gap because uh, we've got flames coming out the, uh, the front um, you can even feel the bottom of the water heater warming slightly uh, and the tent's getting nice and warm inside. So, um, if you're going to cook uh, on uh, on stoves or just generally around fires, it's always good to, uh, to have a little bit of a leather glove. Um, these are just uh, the standard gardening gloves. Um, what I'll do, I'll just take this um, disc off and you can see the flames coming out of the top. Um, so uh, that's great now for frying, so I'll put my cast iron pan on, which actually seals that in there, so all that heat's getting up into that pan. Uh, I'm going to cook myself some lunch. So the efficiency of that, this is a cast iron Lodge Logic skillet, uh, and within sort of like two minutes the whole pan's uh, warmed up and uh, frying an egg. Um, we've got the water heater there, um, just nicely warming up, and we're looking to stove box itself, there we go, lots of kindling and the pan still handles cool enough and there we go the flame coming out the top so as long as you've got a pan big enough to seal that in um, you'll get no smoke into the tent. Frontier stove, really good piece of equipment, really versatile cooking outside in the summer, use it inside a tent, you can even get a shed kit for it and best of all, it's really, really well priced. Thanks for watching.